could be taken, you know, to some kind of animal study to see what's going on with it. Uh, so it's definitely something that, you know, you definitely, you need to be aware of and you need to kind of be careful with, with your, using them. Your otter gets shipped off to the military so they can study it. And that's when we get Zoo Mafia Black Ops. <laughs> I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy. For nerds, by, by nerds. All right, so today we're diving back into Zoo Mafia, and today we're going to be talking about the Playbooks. Uh, this one's, you know, a lot of fun. You know, we've been having a, a blast playing Zoo Mafia. I think at the time of recording this, we've played five sessions of our RPG. And, you know, it's it's just been, you know, an absolute pleasure to, to kind of explore the, the setting that you've come up with, as well as to kind of work on the mechanics and make adjustments and, and really have a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, so last night was session five, and, like... So we've been adjusting the mechanics as we go along, and even I, there was another adjustment that I wanted to make and tweak, and it was like, and I forgot to tell you guys beforehand. <laughs> so, like during the session, I'm like, remember, guys, this is a live play test. Here's a change we just made. Yep, and and those kind of things like you know, really do have the ability to to add into it. And I almost got to use them, but unfortunately, uh, you know, spoiler, uh, I, I was I was forced to make another roll, so I couldn't use those forwards to apply to damage because I was really looking to, to put the hurt on somebody. Today in this specific video, we're going to be talking about the playbooks that we're using for Zoo Mafia RPG. Um, but with that, I think we have to kind of go into like what's a playbook and where, where do they come from? So if you miss some of our other videos, you know, we kind of decided that we are building our game off of the Power by the Apocalypse engine. And for a lot of ways, we're really looking at Monster of the Week. And Monster of the Week uses playbooks as your class, as your, you know, this is your character. So that's where they come from. And that's kind of what they are. Yeah, I mean, almost all of the Power by Apocalypse games uses the playbook system. There might be a couple that are a little bit different, but for the most part, it's playbooks. And, you know, so a, a playbook is basically, they're almost like pre-gen characters. Yeah, so you're going to get a an assortment of abilities that you get to choose a certain number from, and it's going to have a stat array or several options for your stat array that you're going to be able to pick from. And it's usually, you know, flavored in a way of, oh, well, what stat is going to be the most important to this particular character class? And it's going to put your high number there and then an assortment of how how else do you want to spread your points? So and and depending upon the play style that you're looking for, your particular character is gonna what is is gonna allow you to choose the array that best fits you. Like yeah, so a typical you know a typical playbook kind of layout is going to be, you know, the name of the playbook, which determines like either who you are or what you do, right? So it could be more like a profession, or it could kind of just to def define like your character and their personality and then from there you have a bunch of stats and like you said there's a stat configurations that you, you choose one that that you prefer and, and then you know from there it's basically some narrative stuff a lot of times where it's like what your character looks like maybe the personality traits um you get moves you're going to choose a certain amount of moves that your character is going to have uh, games where equipment is relevant you're going to make your equipment choices um, and then, you know, there might be some other narrative stuff depending on the system that you're using. Yeah, and, and that's that's it in a nutshell. It's a very easy to kind of go in, you know, you take a minute, you read through the options, all right, I want that one and I want that one. Uh, I, I think, you know, my character is going to be this type of play. So, all right, my prime stat is here. The secondary stat I want is over here. So this array best fits me. The Power by the Apocalypse engine is based off of your stats are a bonus to the roll, and you either have a range of like negative one to a plus two as your starting array. Uh, on very rare occasions, I think there might be somewhere like you have a ma minus one and everything else just might be a plus, you know, a plus one. But, you know, like I said, that might be a very rare scenario. But usually you get a plus two in whatever it is that you're going to be good at. Yeah, so uh, so it's it's almost like a, like a pre-gen, like I mentioned. I remember the first time that I played a um, Powered by the Apocalypse game. It was Monster of the Week. And someone asked me to be in one of their games. And I'm like, sure, I might need a little help with the character uh, creation. And then I looked at the character 
creation system and the playbooks, it's like, oh, <laughs> just follow the the instructions, right? There might be something you might need to figure out what it does, but for the most part, it's like you're just checking boxes and picking things, and it's super easy, even if you're a, a newbie player and you have very little experience. You know, I had uh, gone to a convention many, many years ago, um, you know, back in the early days of Nerdarchy, and I had played a game that was powered by the Apocalypse Engine and hadn't even realized it, and that was Dungeon World. And I've played like two or three sessions over the course of, you know, my time here at Nerdarchy. And, you know, I've since looked at other games and since played a campaign that Dave ran with Monster of the Week. Very much loved it. It definitely led us in the direction that, you know, it fits for the style of game that we're looking to run here. But the, the character creation, the playbooks, is a very, very fun, a very easy to, to generate method, not only from a perspective of designing new playbooks, but from a ease of making characters from a player perspective. So, you know, since we were talking about the playbooks, let's go into some pros and cons for using the playbook system. So as I kind of just mentioned, they're, they're very simple. Even if you're not super knowledgeable about anything within the, the, the Power by the Apocalypse games, a lot of things do describe what you're looking to do. And it's like, oh, if you're going to use this particular skill, this is how you can apply it. Or if you're going to do this and you're successful, you get a you know, get a plus one on your next roll or you get a plus one for the scene. Like those things that can be the the moves or powers that you can choose from, it, it, it is kind of self-describing without needing necessarily to know the rules. That, and, you know, like you said, simple, quick, super quick for character creation. You get in there and, like, you know, it, I, w 10 minutes or less to create a character, I think 10 minutes is being super generous. I, I think so as well. I would say three to five minutes. Yeah, you know, I... For a more experienced gamer, right? If sure. you're new to the hobby, it might take a little bit longer as you're like, well, you know, what does a stat do and why is it important that I switch how my character works in this particular rules? Sure. But, you know, even with all that, it is still super quick, which I love that. Like you mentioned, you're able to go to a convention. They don't even bother. There's no need to bother with pre-gen characters because the playbooks are practically that anyway. Be like, here, let's make your character. Yeah, there were literal printouts, you know, and you would just say, okay, I'm going to circle this thing. I'm going to circle that thing. I've got my character ready to go, and you just start playing. And because of, you know, that ease, it really clear, clearly defines what your character has the ability to do within the game and, and what they are as a whole. Like, narratively. Uh, narratively, yeah. yeah. Narratively and mechanically, it's just very structured. It's like, oh, this is exactly what my character does. I'm playing Monster of the Week. I'm monstrous. I'm a werewolf or a vampire or some <laughs> other kind of uh, creature of the night. And now, you know, I, 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 we're fighting fire with fire, me being the fire. Right. Y you know, or chosen. What, it, what are you? You're chosen by some <laughs> like, you know, higher power or something. Yeah. It, it's, it's very, very easy to kind of yeah. understand exactly what that does. But now from the other side, what are the cons of, you know, using playbooks? Well, first of all, just less options, right? Like you, you're kind of like pigeonholed into whatever the playbooks are. You're gonna pick one of them. That's it. Yeah. So like that, having less choices over the course of you know looking at at a D and D, there are 13 character classes that are official, and each one of them has numerous subclass options. So there's a lot. A lot of diversity in, in choice when you look at a game like D&D &D that's been around, whereas if you were to look at, you know, Zoo Mafia, right now we only have four playbooks. We're looking to, you know, make some more for our quick start rules, but there's going to be less options, and once you make it, it's not like in each one is a plethora of choices to, to make beyond that, but that kind of go, goes without saying, like, sometimes games need to be more simple to make it the ease of play that much better. Yeah, so with the playbooks, like if if you play a particular playbook multiple times, it's going to be very similar. There is not going to be a huge difference between the run-throughs or when different players mechanically. Now you can role play and play the characters differently, but how the character mechanically works in the game, not a lot of variance. Uh, but you know the, that's the trade-off for quick character creation and simple simplified rules. You know, I'm playing a safe cracker in Zoo Mafia, so I'm like, I'm the rogue of the party. I'm the guy that uses the tools. So like, if you need to get into or get out of a place, I'm your otter. Uh, but 
you know, you can't play a safe cracker and not be the, the tool guy. You might say, all right, well, you know, normally my character is, is sly, you know, therefore that, that's my, 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 I got to do a crime kind of thing. You're going to be good at that. But what if I wanted to make my secondary stat wild so that when we got into combat, I was definitely more of a melee guy than a shoot with guns guy. Mechanically, that is enough of an adjustment to be different but ultimately, you're still going to take things that are the tool person because that's what that playbook is designed to do. Then I, I want to say one of the biggest things, too, about and cons about playing a Power by the Apocalypse game where you're using playbooks is generally there's only one type of playbook per group, right? Like you're not going to have two safe crackers in your Zoo Mafia game. Uh, you know, it, you know, in the, you know, in Monster of the Week, you're not going to have two mundanes, which they're just like regular humans. Uh, like the game we played on, we had a mundane and they're basically playing like the cable guy. <laughs> is it was their thing, um, so you're not gonna have two uh, two two of them. Where in D and D you can have two fighters. You know you can have Legolas and Gimli who are both fighters, yet they they play very differently and mm -hmm. seem very different because you know one's a dwarf, one's an elf, one's a ranged combatant, one is using axes and close quarters, uh, and and you know it seems like. You know, and even if you were to play those two characters back to back, you would get a different experience. Where if you play a mundane, you know, in Monster of the Week, your experience is going to be pretty similar. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be the regular person. That's what that's what you do. Yeah, and like we even did a whole series on you know an all party class. You know, we did a whole series of how to do all all thirteen character classes, and it's a scenario that like yeah, in D and D, it's very easy to kind of you know, theme and generate a game that's designed for the entire party operating with the character class. And with the Power by the Apocalypse engine, like, the games aren't designed for that kind of stuff because there's not enough versatility within a playbook to show that kind of diversity. If everybody is like, oh, well, I'm really good at this one thing. All right, well, over the course of a session, there's not enough going on that focuses on that one particular area unless you really like super tailor the game to these kind of things, allowing everyone to have a little moments to shine. Whereas in a typical game where you don't share playbooks, it, it's open and there's enough things going on that everybody does have that moment. For sure. Now, if this stuff is interesting to you and you want to you wanna stay uh, in the know with what's going on with Zoo Mafia, we have a newsletter just for that. It's an email list you can jump on. And when we when we release the quick start rules, we're going to put it there first, so those you folks can get a hold of it. And also, when there's new things that are happening happening with Zoo Mafia, we're going to let you know through the newsletter. You know, eventually we're hoping to crowdfund fund this game and you know make the physical copies of it and all that good stuff. But if you want to stay in the know, join our family at Zoo Mafia, and you can click the link down below or one of these cards for that newsletter. So we kind of mentioned that we have a number of playbooks already generated. I mean, we, we need to, we're, we're play testing the game over, you know, over on Tuesday nights on the channel. Uh, so what do we have so far? All right, so the way our playbooks are gonna kind of shake out is, you know, you have you know, what, you know, what, the, what your profession is, what your, what your criminal path kind of is, is the main thing. And then after that, you know, we're using a tag system to where you're gonna choose, you know, okay, this is my animal type and here are kind of like some tags that would go along with that if you're a spider you would probably have something with web spinning and climbing um they don't necessarily have mechanical benefits directly into the game but if something comes up and you're like um i you know i'm a spider i want to climb up the wall your you know your your zookeeper that's running the game isn't going to be like roll this they're going to be like no just climb up the wall or if you're playing you know a bird and you're like i would like to fly from here to there you know as long as you're not playing a flightless bird or a penguin uh you know there's no check or roll that's just something your character does right D, &D characters don't need to roll a walk unless there's some kind of you know hazard in the way you know, so along the same lines, the tag system allows the animal characters to do what animals would typically be able to do. So after, you know, after you kind of have your animal tags, which, like I said, they're going to be more narrative than anything. They may come up in the game. Like, for instance, Ted's character has aquatic because he's playing an otter, which means he's equally at home on land or in the water. Yeah, so I'm an otter, I'm aquatic, I have a pouch, and I'm small. 
So that 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 is the tags that I chose for Tommy Tolman. And you know, you choose three to five tags depending upon what's there. And if something comes up and you're like, hey, I haven't reached my maximum tags, can I add this? You know, most of the time the GM is gonna just be like, you know, yeah, go ahead and stamp that on there. And that makes it a lot, a lot easier. To, to kind of have that free form because it's not going to mess things up. Now you just have to, you know, play within the, the confines of the, the rules and, you know, with, with things being fair. Yeah. And then next up we have our, our, our uh, primary stats, which are going to be awareness, magnetism, moxie. We got precision, sly, and wild. And, you know, your, your awareness is basically, it is just how you perceive your surroundings. Magnetism is... Basically, it's like your charisma, how how other people perceive you and how they interact with you. Moxie is your will or your grit. You know, precision, it's going to be your ability to use ra ranged weapons. It's like, you know, how, how precise can you be? Or agility as well. Sure. Uh, you know, sly, that, that's where I kind of fit more with, with the agility, but it's your, your ability to do, to do crime in, in this particular game. Can you sneak? Can you steal? You know, can you open something? And then while this is kind of going to be your, your brute, your strength, um, you know, how much are you giving into your animal side? And, well... Let's face it, go wild. Yeah. If you're doing animal stuff or physicality, it's going to rely on wild. Next up, we have harm and we have markers. Uh, so your your harm is, you know, your your damage track. You know, you, you goes from 10 down to 1. Uh, once you get to, to 5 or below, you become unstable. Things typically do a range of 1 to 3 damage, though there are things that could pump that up. Uh, your markers, this is going to be your, your thing that's, you know, a little bit new if you're not overly familiar with the Power by the Apocalypse. But there's always some kind of track that determines your your course over the, cor uh, over the game. Uh, if your markers, in this case, get down to, you know, to one or zero, uh, you're essentially out. You know, your, your character has died. The humans have become aware that you're something different and they transport you out of the zoo. It really depends upon what your zookeeper wants to do. But basically, you, you fill that, that bar and your 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 character is gone. You know, see you later. Sign up. Yeah, if you if you run out of either bar, you're done. Um, but one of them is more narrative, and the other one is more mechanical in nature. But also markers. There's a bunch of things you can trade them in for and do in in the game with them. Uh, if you can you can turn a failure into a success. You can remove damage uh, from a the hit you would have just received. You can increase the damage from a hit you give. Um, so they're a narrative tool. If you're familiar with any system with bennies, this is our version. The only difference is once you've run out of your bennies in this, you know, the game is over for your that character because, uh, like Ted said, like probably not so much that they get killed, but the humans have figured out what's going on and there's something wrong with this animal. So it has to be removed from the zoo at the very least. It could be put down. It could be taken out. It could be taken, you know, to some kind of animal study to see what's going on with it. Uh, so it's definitely something that, you know, you definitely, you need to be aware of and you need to kind of be careful with, with your, using them. Your otter gets shipped off to the military so they can study it. And that's when we get Zoo Mafia Black Ops. <laughs> um, you know, but I mean... You, know, you can you can use them or wait until like you're down to the the point where you're going to die. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to turn in turn in those things so I don't. But in last night's session, I used two of them. You know, I'm like, no, this is going to happen. Uh, and I thought it was you know just an absolute you know badass moment for my character to just be like, yep, I'm going to shine and I'm going to do some great things. And that's what those markers are there for. For sure. So, and then the playbooks have specific moves that are attached to those playbooks. Uh, generally, all of them start with basically three moves that they get, and then as you advance and level up, you're going to gain more moves that you can add to add to your game. Some of those moves just increase a stat. Others are just new powers and abilities. Um, some, you know, some playbooks will have special moves where it's a separate category where they can only choose. One or one from that, like there might be, uh, you know, two or three of them that they choose from, and they can't choose any more of that, you know, because they're they're very specific to the game. Like, and some of them may only have one of those, but they just automatically get that. So when you start, and generally it's like when you start a job, which is like the beginning of an adventure, you make this role, and something good or something bad could happen depending on that role. But you know, it it, it revolves around how your character works. Yeah, in Monster of the Week, my the character that I played had a to basically have some kind of premonition 
And what that did, that would give me essentially a clue into the mystery that we were running that night. So there are times that having having those kind of preemptory skills makes the rest of the job easier if you're successful. If it's not successful, you wind up making the job a little bit harder. But those things really do add a, a lot, of, lot more fun to the game. And I, I really enjoyed having those kind of things. So when I chose this type of character, I, I don't have any of those kind of abilities. So I'm like, all right, I just kind of get in and do the thing where like two of the other characters in the group do have one of those one of those kind of abilities. We're like, oh, we're starting a job. Let's roll dice and see what happens. And again, like this is all still in playtest and we're literally running a live stream right now where we are kind of playtesting as, as it goes. Like I said, you can find those on, on the channel as well. So even some of the things we're going to talk about in the design diaries are going to obviously change from, from now until then. And we consider we're considering this like our, you know, our very first like alpha test of sure. the rules. And then after we've gone through our 12 sessions, we're going to build the quick start rules. And then we want to get the rules in uh, people's hands and see what they do with them and see where it goes from there. All right. So what actual ideas do we have in regards to playbooks? I know we've got four players in the game. So we've got four that we have, a, as you call them, alpha rules for those. But what are we thinking about in regards to total options? All right. So we've got, we've got a list of a bunch of them. So driver, muscle... Uh, grifter, or confidence person, and safe cracker. We've got pickpocket, cleaner, the hit person, or the, the button person, if you will. We've got a fence. We've got a lookout. We've got an arsonist, a burglar, a forger, and a mastermind or planner type character. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of versatility here. Already going over the different stats, like you can definitely see like, oh, well, this one, you know, kind of links to this particular thing. Whereas this, this class or playbook definitely fits with this particular stat. So we want to make sure that we have versatility in, you know, what we're going to put into our quick start rules. So we've got four that's spread out, but we've got six different stats. So we should really be making sure that we've got you know a playbook for all six stats as the primary so that you can play at least something that fits the the stat region that you're looking to play yeah so we're looking at right now we've got a lookout that we have we got your safe cracker we have a uh, hip person or button person and we have a confidence person or grifter in the group so far so we're going to want to make one or two more uh archetypes playbooks what do you guys think which ones should we make do you think we missed something we left something off uh do you have any thoughts or ideas that you want to share with us of the nerdarchy community we have a place for it down in the comments below while you're down there don't forget to stop by that middle section and do all those things that make youtube and nerdarchy happy like share subscribe go ahead and click on that notification bell you know you want to quick reminder mondays wednesdays and fridays we drop new videos here on the channel so come on back but you can't wait that long no worries we've got you covered up here you can find a card for the last design diary that we did and that one we talk about what's in the zoo so until next time stay, stay nerdy, nerdy.